welcome everyone <clears throat> good evening uh, i think time is right we should start so today we continue with the conversations with shurubindu apavitraga take up maybe reflect upon some new practices or thoughts Through these conversations, so <clears throat> we maybe start today here uh, at page number. Yeah, I think yes. After Friday, December twenty-five. Yeah, we can start from Wednesday, December thirty. Just a moment. Yeah, so we continue again, taking a few. Uh, reflections today from maybe couple of pages today from conversation with shyorbindo by pavitra da so we start with bedness day december 30 1925 again so he's working on his mind and inner work is going on so questions are arising from that and i feel they are very helpful for all of us also so let us go through this page anyone who would like to read please uh, unmute and go ahead Okay, so if not anyone has the capacity, I can also go ahead. So this uh, should I? Uh, yeah, why not? Yeah, please <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, you can hear me. Yes, I can. Yeah. Okay. So Wednesday, December thirty, nineteen twenty-five. I succeed for a few minutes in keeping myself attentive, empty of thought. But then the sensations return with a new strength. I do not succeed in turning away from a noise once my attention is caught there, for I have no object of concentration. The first step is not to withdraw from all thought and sensation, but to consider them as outside oneself. There are two regions in the mind: one active, the other calm and attentive. Not dragged away. by the movements of nature it is this distinction that you must make you want to go too far by suppressing even the thought i am not that at the moment this thought is your instrument you remain the spectator of your thoughts and sensations recognizing that they are outside you and do not affect you then the higher consciousness purusha consciousness will descend and take possession of your mind but never struggle for in the mind what you reject violently returns with a greater force to struggle is to enter into all sorts of difficulty thank you so much yes so if any thoughts are there any reflections they are welcome so i think uh, maybe it was yesterday in some yesterday or day before yesterday i think it was yesterday only we were talking of uh, you know the how when we are struggling too much with what we are going through right now you know, then it actually becomes too difficult for us so i may be feeling say uh, in the overwhelm of a mood you know, something may be there and some are depressive or pain kind of a sensation may be there some emotional pain some mental pain maybe a physical pain and at times it happens that we form many images and theories in our heads that if i am spiritual this i should not be you know letting this happen <laughs> or oh I, i i thought i have transcended that why why is it here again you know things like that we have conception uh, conceptions continuously uh, forming in our mind which we are not aware of so at times we can see that we are trying to fight these happenings that are happening with us so uh, yesterday also we were discussing that how uh, it is completely okay to go through these phases of life phases of life stages of life whether it is an inner work going in the mind or 
from outer happening and the more we try to resist that oh this should not happen this should not happen why because you know i am doing some sadhana serious sadhana hai the more it becomes really complicated and entangled and actually brings us totally down while the more we embrace all these movements in our life and aspects in our life knowing that it is a long process of inner work and things will happen and like in my mind i cannot just completely silence the mind maybe at times it happens by itself but if i force it to make it happen that oh this is how it should be and this is what i am going to do else everything else is you know not allowed then we see that we struggle too much and when we are struggling too much something kind of you know comes back with a greater force and we are just completely then the under its uh, kind of influence so uh, a kind of love and kindness towards oneself is very much necessary like that sunma shares uh, in many of her uh, talks that many people ask that you know when i begin to meditate i sleep and then she is very kind and she says that it means that you need sleep so don't try to now push yourself that oh why did i sleep when i wanted to meditate you know not like that so first have your full sleep you know if you are meditating and the mind sitting for meditation or lying down and the mind feels relaxed maybe it is too much stressed and by running 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 and running and now the first thing it wants is a kind of a relaxing down and whenever we relax we actually mean that okay let me sleep so she says that first you fulfill your sleep you have a good sleep and then after you have slept enough then you say that okay now for 5 minutes 10 minutes i am going to say concentrate with on the breath or however so uh, i i see a reflection of uh, that here also you know when shri rubindo shares so sneez sharing something but at times things seem too unpleasant to embrace so one ends up resisting and struggling that's true that's true but uh, when things are unpleasant to embrace i think that's where the challenge is and that's also when i see now we are talking of embracing all happenings of life whether it is happening in the mind or outside now this too can become an attachment in the mind that okay you know now i am supposed to embrace everything in life so oh i am not able to embrace you know oh why am i not able to embrace so this also can stick <laughs> so now embracing that i am not able to embrace that at that point also some relief you know kind of a knot get gets kind of open up and resolved so when we are things as you said you know things are unpleasant and i am trying to embrace but it's not happening so again to be kind to ourselves that uh, at this moment i am not able to embrace you know, let me just accept the facts so that also is okay <laughs> so at any moment see what basic problem i think what we were reflecting upon yesterday also is that we keep resisting whatever is happening either in us with respect to movements or outside of kind of our body in the sense that happenings of life things may be happening which i don't want them to happen and i resist and i am not able to embrace uh, the fact that think those things are happening which i did not want in my life and now i am resisting that oh why am i not able to embrace that that also becomes a struggle so i can just tell to myself that okay right now i am not able to embrace so embracing the fact that we are not able to embrace that also is okay at any moment we be, we can actually stop that struggle which uh, continuously goes on and on and on <clears throat> so shurabindu shares here that yes deepa go ahead but isn't it true that sometimes when you're making changes in your life or um, like transitions that things you get out from your comfort zone you decide okay i'm going to go on this path and it is difficult when you make those changes so you're resisting the law of the original world that you've been in 
and you're making a conscious decision to change so there is a certain resistance your mind also tries to tell you no stay here then it will give you a lot of pros of being in the same kind of comfort zone that you are in mm-hmm. and you're trying to get away so mm-hmm. those are those times also you feel you're resisting a lot and for me it, it uh this then this goes against that phase of life when you're kind of trying to bring major transformations within yourself and outside mm-hmm. So does that mean then you go back into your comfort zone? Then you do not resist the change, or are you not ready? So how does it work? Yeah, no, I think very true. So there are two kinds of frictions that we face. Um, one is uh, what we discussed, you know, that we are maybe trying too hard, and uh, that that is creating a lot of resistance and friction, and that is not leading us anywhere. It's just making us stuck. So that was what we discussed right now. what you are sharing is a very positive kind of a, a friction that we have to go through it is like when i am stuck in my grooves and i have to attempt to get out of those grooves when i am stepping out of those grooves i will face a resistance you know aap ek track ke upar chal rahe ho aur wo track se ab aap hatna cha rahe ho to jab aap usse nikalna cha rahe ho again there is a friction you know now you don't want to go back into the same groove as you know as i understood from your sharing which is a very positive kind of uh, a pain it's an auspicious yeah snehi says it's an auspicious kind of a discomfort it's like you know when labor pain happens we know that we are giving birth to something new right so we happily go through that pain you know it it's not a bad kind of pain we know that it's a good pain of new birth so i feel that uh, these pains of giving ourselves new births actually happen many many times in one life that's what i feel that we can keep on birthing ourselves rebirthing ourselves again and again and again because we do keep getting stuck in our patterns and grooves and this is a very auspicious kind of resistance or friction if even if we have to go through we must actually persist and endure and go through and it it takes courage uh, stepping out of those grooves and you face resistance and friction as you said yourself yeah so again there also an embrace can be there that because this is an auspicious kind of a movement some something in us knows let me endure the pain let me endure the friction so there also that embrace can be there yeah that's what i thank think. you yeah thank you okay yes so the first step is not to withdraw from all thought and sensation so not fighting that okay since sri aurobindo has said that okay it is best to silence the mind let me fight all the thoughts not like that you know so he is saying that when i am using uh, this thought that i am not that so some thoughts and feelings may be going on the surface consciousness and i am looking at them my observing mind is looking at them and i am saying i am not that i am not that that is also a thought when i am saying i am not that you know that's a thought itself but that thought is uh, something which i am making use of it's a beneficial thought that sunmo also shares that it's not that we have to uh, become dumb and uh, you know say that no i would not ever ever think any time because thinking is bad it's not like that because if we see look at ourselves what goes on in our mind 90% of the time what we are thinking is unnecessary and it takes us down and pulls us down and they are loopy 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 thoughts which are not taking us anywhere it is those patterns that uh, have to be dropped and a kind of a little bit of mastery has to come that when i want to be quiet and silent i can be quiet and silent you know that it is now my time to be quiet and silent and to dip the mind in that silence give it a silent dip uh, out of which when the mind
kind of arises again it is a fresh mind it is an uh, a different kind of a mind a light and supple mind it's not a mind which has dipped itself into the thoughts of past and present commentaries and what is wrong that is happening in my life and me 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 it's not that kind of a mind you know aap nahate hain sab hum sab nahate hain there is a lot of difference jab hum saaf pani se nahate hain aur jab hum keechad wale pani se nahate hain so same with the mind you know jab mind ko hum holy silence mein dip karte hain mother ke name pe dip karke hum rest lete hain 10 minutes 15 minutes it's a different kind of a fragrance that that mind oozes out and when that mind is dipped into all the past and present commentaries and future worries and then it comes out of that silence or whatever our own time we see that that's a different kind of a mind you know it's a stinky mind so who wants a stinky mind so we have the capacity to discern that i am becoming too stinky my mind has gathered too much of garbage let me shed it off so we consciously get up and we do some sadhana and we you know maybe stay with breath or look at the thoughts and stay as awareness whatever works for each one of us yeah so it is just uh, shorobindu in the first part is sharing that it is not that you have to shun away everything at once and he says that there are two regions in the mind one is active too much happening the other is calm and attentive yeah, this aspect of mind which can observe and see dal mein kala hai ya nahi hai you know this discerning intelligent aspect of our mind which can look at the movements of our surface mind so there are two regions in the mind one is active the other calm and attentive this we have to use not dragged away by the movements of nature and this aspect of mind this observing mind is always present but the moment the problem is that we are not attentive that it is present the moment we want to look at it that acha mujhe let me see ye jo maine likha hai isme kahan pe mere shabd sundar hai aur kahan pe main aur sundar kar sakti hu you know the moment we look at anything whether in our mind in our feelings in our thoughts or at a paper that we may have written something there is something in us which can clearly clearly see okay where the improvement can be made so when i'm going through life experiences and i see that oh i am too attached at some or the other point i can see for myself that i am attached at this point and it is bringing me a lot of suffering can't we you know we can see that and when we see that then we can take that moment to actually transcend that weakness of ours because now we see that how much misery it brings me when i remain engulfed in those thoughts or feelings which are just pulling me down 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 you know what are they wanting me uh, to do and uh, whether i want to do that or not you know is it a beneficial thing so uh, this observing aspect of mind also is uh, present with all of us all the time which we have to make use of so it is this distinction that you must make you want to go too fast you know ki humko lagta hai ki jaldi se abhi abhi guitar kharida nahi aur humko lagta hai bas ab concert player ban jaye jaldi se you know aisa lagta hai humko bahut jaldi hoti hai humko aage badhne ki so we want to go too fast by suppressing even the thought i am not that so i am saying that mujhe sidhi ka bhi istemal nahi karna aur chhat pe pahuncha do mujhe भाई ये कैसे पॉसिबल है पंख अभी लगे नहीं है हुँ? लिफ्ट अवेलेबल नहीं है लैडर अवेलेबल है और लैडर हम लेना नहीं चाह रहे क्योंकि हम कह रहे हैं नहीं नहीं आई वांट टू बी इंडिपेंडेंट आई वांट टू बी इंडिपेंडेंट आई डोंट वांट एनी बडीज हेल्प और छत पे पहुंचना चाह रहे हैं तो दैट प्लीज डोंट डू दैट यू वॉन्ट टू गो टू फास्ट बाई सप्रेसिंग इवन द थॉट आई एम नॉट दैट एट द मोमेंट दिस थॉट इज योर इंस्ट्रूमेंट सो दिस इज माई लैडर remain the spectator of your thoughts and sensations recognizing that they are outside you and do not affect you so this we have to remind ourselves again and again because we forget because when thoughts feelings and sensations are there we forget that oh i was able to i had to actually look at them as coming from outside I, we totally forget then he says that we need when we look at them when we develop this ability to look at the mind which takes a lot 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 of time then the higher consciousness will descend and take possession of your mind this happens from above 
but never struggle for in the mind what you reject violently turns returns with a greater force to struggle is to enter into all sorts of difficulties so this ability to look at the mind is not easier said actually it is easier said than done all of us must whoever is doing trying to do experiment even little with that aspect you will see how difficult it is because there are many many moments when we are not able to observe we are swept away and in buddhist tradition there are two aspects one is uh, the shamata aspect looking at the breath or maybe looking at a flame or a pebble or concentrating the mind on something which is like a name divine name or form that is shamata aspect that stabilizes the mind and gives it the power to actually stably observe this power we don't have uh, by default of course in varying degrees we may have but still there is a lot of work that we can do so so we see that when i am observing my thoughts or feelings or happenings in me then for 2 minutes i may be able to observe 2 minutes is actually a longer time that i have said but let's say for some moments i am able to observe very quickly i lose that observation aspect and i am totally in the river i am lost in those thoughts and story lines i am not able to be the observer so this comes very gradually and we can't uh, we that's why people talk of forming a discipline because without discipline it is not possible if i want to be a concert player in guitar every day i have to spend some minimum like an hour or two hours or more on the guitar and it will hurt my fingers and uh, the fingers will slowly you know gain that hard skin that comes with playing the guitar and at times i may strain my back but all of that is part of the game jet sunna when she was uh, doing uh, the sadhana in her cave for 12 years she was in that cave and one can just imagine my god how is that possible how is that possible so how much dedication dedication and commitment she must have that no this is very very necessary i have to do that and uh, she say share that there was a meditation box box in which she used to sit and uh, she actually slept even in that meditation box she did not lie down to sleep so how much motivation and dedication it requires knowing that this is what i want to do because rest everything is misery so if you have tasted misery then we are able to cultivate good things without tasting misery uh, things don't change for me i am saying for myself that i have seen that if uh, things are not bringing me misery if ego consciousness do not does not bring me misery why would i ever want to be liberated of the ego there is no want in me and i hence there is no discipline but the moment ego consciousness begins to bring us a lot of suffocation and misery and it's complicating things and entangling your relationship then you say that oh my god you know this is very dangerous something has to be done now let me make my discipline and i have to just get out of it so it's a long process and shurabindu shares uh, in her response to pavitra da that don't try to struggle too hard you take it easy so if you are now doing the neti that i am not this thought i am not this feeling i am not this pain or sensation i am the watcher i am the witness then don't try to resist the thought that i am not this that is also a thought and we will make use of that thought in the process which is a long process so anything more here anyone
so we can go ahead if not anything I'm just uh, figuring out uh, which one we can take. Okay, let's read this. Friday, January 8th, 1926. Yeah, would anyone want to read? I'll read it. Yes, please. From Friday, right? Yeah. Friday, January 8, 1926. What seems so simple has become very difficult. These last few days, I've had greatest difficulty in separating myself from my lower mind. It needed a great deal of energy to remain awake attentive and not to let myself be carried away by the stream of mental images without head or tail, a sort of waking dream. Perhaps this is a temporary reaction. What do you do when you try to quiet your mind? I fix my consciousness on a point and try to remain attentive, to watch the play of the lower mind. If I attain this attitude, it becomes quiet. Two postures, one with images, one with language. The one with language is more difficult. It is automatic, does not hook itself to well-defined objects, but to what preoccupies me most or to the last thing I've thought about. The unhooking is often produced by the senses. On what point do you try to fix your consciousness? Normally at the level of the Ajna. Ajna is the center which corresponds to the automatic mind. And it is this dynamic position which is working in you. It is this which constitutes the mind of the majority of men. And if you're conscious of it, if you notice its action during your ordinary occupations, others are not conscious of it. The real mind, thought mind, is higher. The other is the automatic mind, which is no longer of any use to you. It is a waste of nature. Have you ever tried to use the will? Naturally, but I do not know if it is really the will which I have used. The will has three grades and it must be distinguished before all from the effort, which is purely mental. The first grade is desire, corresponding to the solar plexus. The second is sita or aishwarya, is a kind of command of order, which either sanctions or not the work of prakriti. When it is known that a thing must or must not be, it ought to come into action. This is an indispensable power for the yoga we follow. One can call it by a consecration and one becomes aware of its action. This action is disturbed and imperfect at the beginning, but in time it is perfected. Mental effort may succeed in time, 
but the action of the true will is infinitely more rapid. Thank you. Yeah, so if anything is here, if anyone. Yeah. So, uh, if there is anything uh, you want to share, please feel free to share. I'm just going down to the last bit that we just read. that the will has three grades and it must be distinguished before all the effort which is purely mental so one is this mental kind of a control that we want to bring and then the other is uh, will uh, which yurubindu shares that they have to be distinguished the first grade of that will is desire corresponding to the solar plexus this actually we may have uh, seen that if we want to say meet a person that we really really want to meet okay, there is a desire we also have the corresponding will with that desire so you will get up from your bed you will make yourself ready and you will whatever take a tram or bus or car or wherever however you want to go and you will go why? Because there was a desire and that desire made you will it and you went. It made you move. All of us have glimpses of that in our life. That if you really want to meet somebody or you want to do something in your life that oh I want a job in this place or that place. You get up and you move. Now that is where desire is a helper. Because it is kind of a will and operating us in kind of making us move. But the station of this aspect, the desire aspect is the solar plexus, you know, kind of in the center. Mm -hmm. And at times when those things don't happen, we feel like a, somebody has punched us there. So we, I'm sure all of us may have glimpses of that also when it is disappointing. So the first grade is desire corresponding to the solar plexus. The second Ishita or Aishwarya is a kind of a command of order which either sanctions or not the work of Prakriti when it is known that a thing must or must not be. It ought to come into action. This is an indispensable power for the yoga we follow. One, one can call it by consecration and one becomes aware of, it action, of its action. This action is disturbed and imperfect at the beginning. But in time, it is perfected. Hmm? Now, this is something very uh, important and this doesn't come easily. It comes in time with a lot of inner practice and sadhana. Now, we were reading in Synthesis of Yoga and here also earlier that the Purusha reveals uh, itself in various successive stages. First, it reveals itself as the witness. Then it reveals itself as the giver of sanction to all the movements of Prakriti. And it also then realizes that, oh, I am the one who has already sanctioned all the movements of Prakriti. And the moment I want, I can take the sanction, sanction back. You know, so it empowers, that aspect of Purusha empowers. This is the aspect that Shurubhidno is, I believe, talking here. You know, that 
दिस विल इज कमिंग फ्रॉम दैट पुरुषा कॉन्शियसनेस और द विटनेसिंग कॉन्शियसनेस दैट डिटैच इम्यूटेबल इमूवेबल पार्ट इन मी विच इज ऑलवेज ऑलवेज विटनेसिंग and when it is witnessing that oh this is the pattern which is taking me down it also gives me the courage or the required empowerment to stop that sanction that if this i don't want to follow then i actually am not a now going to follow and it is not like you are struggling with yourself it is a lot of discernment and empowerment that is allowing you to be able to do it so it is not a mental effort you are putting it is coming out of that ability to uh, be there in the witnessing stance and to see that oh i was the one who was already giving sanction to these patterns which are now of not any use now i am not going to give sanction to it you know, so there is a kind of a stability and immovability and empowerment that comes with this kind of a willing not willing actually will and this he shares that this slowly we have to develop it's an important aspect of sadhana because that is how we are able to let go of non beneficial patterns unbeneficial patterns and we are then able to adopt those beneficial habits or patterns which are helping us go upward those which are pulling us down again and again again and again in spirals those then we are able to drop so that ability to not to give sanction to those movements of prakriti which are not required now comes from that witnessing aspect and that is also a kind of a grade of will he shares it's called aishwarya it's kind of a command or order which either sanctions or not the work of prakriti when it is known that a thing must or must not be it ought to come into action this is an indispensable power for the yoga we follow one can call it by a consecration and one becomes aware of its action so one can offer it again to the mother that this is what i would like to follow and please you know allow me or grant me the power and courage to follow and this he says that it's not that in the beginning itself it will be all very hunky and dory like not like that this action is disturbed and imperfect in the at the beginning so at times we are able to hold ourselves at times uh, we are not able to you know so it's imperfect yet but in time it is perfected and then he shares that mental effort may succeed in time but the action of true will is infinitely more rapid because it is coming out of a discernment true knowing the true knowing that what am i doing you know what am i doing what am i trying to do by repeating my errors and mistakes again and again where is it leading me where is it leading the other persons around me it is not doing benefit so it comes out of a lot of discernment and hence one is able to then step back or not at times yes so anything here anyone so then he shares something really very nice uh, it's beautiful to have a little bit of glimpse of these uh, when we are doing our work within ourselves and uh, the question is then uh, i have experienced this action when by a call which is at the same time an offering i reach the highest layers of my being i have physically the sensation of an action descending above my head and then he says that's it try from time to time to invoke it a continuous action is yet impossible but get back to the contact now and then the third action of the will is a control or an absolute possession of the prakriti by the purusha so that comes later but this uh, what he shares here that that's it you know when you feel something like your offering offering this uh, one must experience it practical experience of these things are very important because they are the ones which self motivate us so when you are uh, trying to struggle with something or offer something uh, which is lower in your uh, being 
and you don't want to follow it you keep offering it you keep offering it and slowly at times it may happen that your attention goes above in the higher layers of your mind which is like as we discussed earlier also that it is above our head a few inches above our head we are trying to kind of station ourselves there and then at times it happens that we feel like a descent coming down and sri aurobindo says that that's it but initially it would not be that okay that's how you are all the time you don't expect that but whenever you can keep invoking and offering uh, consecrating yourself more and more to the divine and the moment uh, whenever that contact is possible make that contact every now and then make that contact so it's like connecting with our true source again and again in whatever little little short moments we can one of the ways to do that and not to waste those empty pockets of time which we all the time have all the time look at our time you know we are 24 hours a day and uh, no matter how busy we may be there are times when we are sitting on the pot there are times when we are brushing there are times when we are just lying down sleep is not coming there are times when we are driving in the you know there is empty time pocket of time there are times when we are walking you know and again there is empty pocket of time so all these times uh, can be very very well used rather than putting ourselves into netflix and all these unnecessary at times unnecessary you know most of it is unnecessary we all know that you know rather than maybe you know because i can't stand the silence let me call up a friend and you know no matter what kind of a friendship it is you know we actually i feel that we it may give us joy of course all kinds of friendships give us joy but we uh, you know we excessively when we indulge into these activities i feel that we we lose on something very important some precious silent time with ourselves which we have Uh, we may have used for a little bit of practice, and that fit then benefits us in the coming moments. That that reaps its results in the coming moments. Otherwise, again, I'm in down in a you know dump, and uh, I wasted my time. We do that all the time. We are stubborn beings. Learn hard. Anyway. So, anything more here, anyone? So this is uh, I don't know I was just browsing through this comes as something beautiful beautiful you know because from time to time we become very rigid and dogmatic this is how it had should be you know oh what what am I doing you know it this is how it has has to be done and not has to be done so he says that in spiritual life one must always be ready to reject every system and all constructions for a time a certain form is useful then it becomes harmful. in my spiritual life since i was 40 i have three or four times completely discarded and broken the system i had arrived at so i think this is very uh, beautiful you know that uh, from time to time we become very rigid and narrow in our and that is how we have these all these cults and religions who are very like you know constricted narrow and this is how it has to be done but in integral yoga especially mother and shri aurobindo that is why they did not promote uh, uh, kind of lots of gurus you know they did not promote that idea because there is no one formula for every person there is different formula for different person and even for that particular person the formula will keep on changing according to the context and the situation so you we cannot use one formula every time and this comes very clearly out in integral yoga in letters of mother shri aurobindo earlier they won i think there was also somewhere where i read that mother and shri aurobindo said that don't uh, you know disclose 
uh, these uh, exchanges because this is i am saying this in this particular context in another context it may be different but if you use it as a dogma or a formula and give it to another person same the way it won't work because the situation is different the person's combination and permutation is different and we are trying to use the same you know this happens even in homeopathy or naturopathy at times you know because each of us have a different constitution one medicine won't work with everyone it may work on a similar constitution similar type people but on a different constitution person it may not work at all it may fail so what do we do so like that we we are dynamic beings we are organic we are shifting each moment and that is how the advice and suggestion from guru is also very organic and shifting so not to make in our mind also these rigid dogmatic rules which at times we may read it may come that oh right now i need to follow that but maybe after some time you not to, you're not required to follow that you follow something else so to keeping uh, keeping it very fluid and dynamic and letting it evolve truth is always evolving truth is never ever restricted in a cage so our unfoldings of truth in our lives are always evolving and we have to just give them space to evolve so intuitively we would know that this has to evolve this i have to let go that i have to adopt and we must give ourselves that space otherwise too much narrowness and yeah so any last comments before we end anyone all right so i am assuming there is nothing at the moment maybe we can stop here and whatever we have read today or reflected upon maybe some or other bit of it uh, if necessary we can take it home with us uh, for furthering our progress and journey so before we end let's take a moment of silence to again remember the limitless number of beings sentient beings near and far in my home in around me and far away unknown to me may we all have true happiness and the causes of true happiness and may we not have suffering and also may we let go of all the causes of suffering and if suffering is there then may we all have the courage to use it for transcending our weaknesses and imperfections may we all be well and happy and lots of progress in our lives Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.